Have you ever thought about what your favorite ice cream flavor might say about you? Maybe it's a reflection of your adventurous spirit or your comforting simplicity. Today, we'll explore that idea on a global scale. Ice cream, it's a universal treat that transcends borders, uniting us all in a shared love for this delightful dessert. From the creamy, dense texture of Italian gelato to the chewy elasticity of Turkish dondurma, our world is brimming with diverse ice cream flavors. Each one tells a story of its home country, a tale of tradition, culture, and culinary innovation. We'll journey through Italy, Japan, India, Turkey, the Philippines, Mexico, Canada, and more, discovering the unique ways they've transformed this dessert into something truly their own. We'll delve into the sweet, the savory, the crunchy, and everything in between. We'll savor the global array of flavors and textures, each contributing its own unique charm to the delightful world of frozen desserts. So are you ready to travel the world, one scoop at a time? Our first stop is Italy, the birthplace of gelato. Gelato, a luscious dessert, is renowned for its dense, creamy texture that leaves you craving for more. But what makes it so special? It all starts with a blend of whole milk, cream, sugar, and a dash of flavorings. You might opt for a classic vanilla bean, or perhaps venture into the realm of fresh fruits, or even decadent chocolate. The secret to achieving that thick, velvety texture lies in the churning process. Unlike other ice creams, gelato is churned at a slower pace. This minimizes the amount of air incorporated into the mixture, resulting in a denser, creamier treat. Each scoop of gelato is a testament to Italian craftsmanship, a delightful blend of tradition and indulgence. So the next time you're in the mood for a refreshing dessert, remember the Italian gem that is gelato. And there you have it. Creamy, dense, and oh-so-Italian, gelato. Next up, we're heading to Japan for a delightful fusion of tradition and innovation, mochi ice cream. This confectionery wonder combines the soft, chewy texture of mochi with the cool, creamy delight of ice cream. The magic begins with the mochi dough made from sweetened, glutinous rice flour, water, and sugar. It's as simple as it sounds, yet it results in a wonderfully elastic, subtly sweet dough. The dough is then carefully shaped into thin, round discs, ready to envelop scoops of your favorite ice cream. The choices are limitless, from traditional flavors like green tea and red bean to more adventurous ones like wasabi or black sesame. The ice cream-filled mochi is then gently wrapped, creating a neat little package of joy. As the finishing touch, these bite-sized treats are frozen, transforming them into a refreshing, sweet surprise. Each bite unveils the smooth ice cream encased within the soft, chewy mochi exterior. Mochi ice cream, a sweet surprise in every bite. Fasten your seatbelts as we embark on a rapid journey through India, Mexico, Turkey, and the Philippines. Our first stop brings us to the vibrant streets of India, where the scent of spices fills the air. Here we discover kulfi, a traditional Indian delight. This ice cream is made by simmering milk until it reduces, creating a dense, creamy base. Sugar, cardamom, saffron, and chopped nuts are added to the mix, infusing it with a rich, aromatic flavor. Once the mixture is frozen, the result is a dense, creamy ice cream that is as delightful to the palate as it is unique. Next, we jet off to Mexico, where the taste of roasted sweet corn kernels greets us. This is the foundation of corn ice cream, a dessert that captures the heart of Mexican cuisine the roasted corn is infused into milk, then blended with cream and sugar. Sometimes a sprinkle of cinnamon or a hint of vanilla is added for an extra layer of depth. The result is a subtly sweet and creamy ice cream that embodies the spirit of Mexico. From Mexico we travel to Turkey, home of the Dondurma, an ice cream known for its chewy and elastic texture. This unique dessert is made with salep, a flour made from orchid tubers, and mastic resin, which gives it a distinctive chewiness. Milk, sugar, and often a touch of mastic or rose water are added, creating a delightful blend of flavors and textures that is uniquely Turkish. Finally, we land in the Philippines, where the Halo Halo ice cream reigns supreme. This popular Filipino dessert is a riot of flavors and textures. Sweetened fruits, beans, jellies, and shaved ice are combined with condensed and evaporated milk to create a harmonious medley. When transformed into ice cream, 
the Halo Halo becomes a refreshing and indulgent treat that truly captures the essence of the Philippines. Four countries, four distinct flavors, an ice cream journey like no other. From the aromatic spices of India's kulfi to the sweet, corn-infused delights of Mexico's corn ice cream, the chewy, elastic texture of Turkey's dondurma, and the vibrant, colorful mix of the Philippines' Halo Halo ice cream, we've journeyed through a world of flavors. Each country offers a unique take on this beloved dessert, showcasing the diversity and creativity that exists in the world of ice cream. Now, we're off to the Americas, where we'll explore the sweet taste of Canada and the unique creaminess found in parts of Latin America. First, let's head north to Canada, where the maple walnut ice cream is a must-try. This dessert is a delightful blend of sweet and nutty, where the earthy flavor of walnuts marries the rich sweetness of maple syrup. The process starts by creating a vanilla ice cream base, creamy and smooth. Then, we introduce the star of the show, the maple syrup. This syrup, drawn from the sap of the maple tree, adds a distinct sweetness that's unmistakably Canadian. Finally, chopped walnuts are folded in, providing a delightful crunch and a nutty counterpoint to the sweetness of the ice cream. The result is a harmonious blend of flavors and textures that is both satisfying and uniquely Canadian. Next, we journey south to explore a unique take on ice cream that's popular in various parts of Latin America. Avocado ice cream. Yes, you heard it right, avocado. Known for its creamy texture and mild flavor, avocado makes an unexpectedly perfect base for ice cream. The process begins by blending ripe avocados until smooth, then condensed milk and heavy cream are added to create a rich and creamy mixture. Sometimes a splash of lime juice is added for a touch of brightness which cuts through the creaminess and adds an interesting twist. The result is a slightly savory, creamy and utterly delicious dessert that's a refreshing departure from traditional sweet ice creams. From the subtle sweetness of maple to the creaminess of avocado, the Americas offer a diverse ice cream experience. These unique takes on a universally beloved dessert are a testament to the creativity and diversity found in the kitchens across the Americas. So next time you're in the mood for ice cream, why not try one of these recipes and take your taste buds on a journey to the Americas? For our final stop, we're visiting a flavor loved worldwide, Tutti Frutti Ice Cream. This delightful treat stands out with its unique blend of candied or dried fruits folded into a vanilla or cream-based ice cream. Imagine this, a creamy swirl of vanilla or cream laden with tiny jewels of candied fruits. Each spoonful is an adventure, as you never know which fruit flavor will burst forth. Will it be the citrusy tang of orange or the sweet mellow notes of cherry? Perhaps the exotic allure of pineapple or the comforting familiarity of apple? Every bite is a surprise, a mini celebration of fruity sweetness wrapped up in creamy decadence. No wonder it's a favorite across the globe, offering a delicious way to enjoy a medley of fruits in a single scoop. So next time you're craving a fruity treat, remember the global favorite. Tutti Frutti Ice Cream a medley of sweetness enjoyed across the globe. Well, we've made it to the end of our global ice cream journey. From the dense, creamy gelato of Italy to the delightful surprise of Japan's mochi ice cream, we've tasted our way around the globe. We've savored the rich, traditional kulfi of India, the delightful stracciatella of Italy, and the chewy, unique dondurma from Turkey. Our journey took us to the tropical Philippines, where we discovered the mixed delight of Halo Halo ice cream, and to Mexico, where the subtly sweet corn ice cream reigns. We ventured to the great north to taste the harmonious blend of maple and walnut in Canada's specialty, and we've sampled the creamy, slightly savory avocado ice cream popular in various countries. Lastly, we've enjoyed the global favorite, Tutti Frutti ice cream, a delightful medley of fruits folded into a creamy base. Next time you enjoy a scoop of your favorite ice cream, remember, there's a whole world of flavors waiting for you to explore. Until next time, keep your taste buds curious. Ever wandered the labyrinthine streets of Tunisia in search of a culinary delight? Today we whisk you away to the heart of North Africa, where the scent of spices and the hum of bustling markets color the air. Amidst this vibrant chaos, a culinary gem emerges, the brick, a Tunisian pastry as delicate as it is delicious. 
The brick is a gastronomic masterpiece, a blend of simplicity and complexity that dances on the palate. It begins with a thin, crispy dough, as light as a whisper, yet strong enough to hold a treasure trove of flavors. This isn't just any pastry, this is a vessel of Tunisian culture and heritage, a testament to the skill of its creators. So, what's inside this tantalizing parcel? The brick is traditionally filled with a delectable mixture of tuna, egg, capers, and parsley. Each ingredient plays a pivotal role, harmonizing to create a symphony of flavors. The tuna lends a savory richness, the capers add a tangy punch, while the parsley brings a burst of freshness. And the egg? It's the star of the show, its yolk oozing out in a golden river when the brick is cut open, a sight as mesmerizing as a Tunisian sunset. The art of making a brick is a spectacle in itself. As the sun dips below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, locals gather around bubbling pots of oil. Their hands move with practiced grace, folding the pastries with an ease born of tradition and repetition. There's a rhythm to their work, a dance that echoes the heartbeat of Tunisia. But the true magic happens when the brick meets the oil. The pastry sizzles and bubbles, its surface turning a beautiful golden brown. The aroma that fills the air is intoxicating, a promise of the culinary delight that awaits. As dusk falls, the tantalizing aroma of freshly fried brick wafts through the air, marking the end of another day in Tunisia. The brick is more than just a pastry, it's a journey, a story, a slice of Tunisian culture served on a plate. And each bite, it's like tasting Tunisia itself. Have you ever ventured into the vibrant markets of Georgia? The air is filled with the smell of fresh produce, spices, and a particular scent that is both comforting and tantalizing. That's the scent of kachapuri, Georgia's national dish. Kachapuri, for the uninitiated, is a boat-shaped bread, a culinary masterpiece that finds its roots deep in the heart of this Eurasian country. It's a simple yet indulgent treat, a testament to the Georgian values of hospitality and warmth. The bread, which serves as the vessel, is made from a dough of flour, water, and yeast, kneaded until it's soft and pliable. It's then shaped into a boat, an emblem perhaps of Georgia's historical connection to the Black Sea. But what really sets Kachapuri apart is its filling, a molten pool of cheese bubbling and simmering within the bread. The cheese used is typically a local variety called sulguni, a pickled cheese that's slightly sour and incredibly creamy. It's mixed with eggs and butter to create a filling that's rich, gooey, and oh-so-satisfying. Right before the kachapuri is done baking, an egg is cracked on top, its yolk adding a touch of golden luxury. Eating kachapuri is a ritual in itself. The piping hot bread is torn piece by piece and dipped into the molten cheese and egg mixture. The result is a symphony of textures and flavors. The crispness of the bread, the creaminess of the cheese, and the richness of the egg. Kachapuri is more than just a dish in Georgia. It's a symbol of the country's history, its culture, and its love for good food. It's a dish that's shared amongst family and friends, a centerpiece at parties and gatherings, a beloved indulgence that's as Georgian as the mighty Caucasus Mountains. As the Kachapuri bakes, the aroma of molten cheese fills the air, a comforting reminder of the culinary richness Georgia has to offer. Have you ever roamed the bustling streets of Malaysia? If you have, you might have come across a unique delicacy known as roti jala, a lace-like pancake that's as much a treat to the eyes as it is to the palate. Its name is derived from the Malay words roti, meaning bread, and jala meaning net, reflecting the intricate lace pattern of this delightful pancake. The preparation of roti jala is as fascinating as its appearance. The batter, a simple blend of flour, eggs, coconut milk, turmeric and a pinch of salt, is poured onto a hot griddle using a special mold with five holes. This mold, traditionally made from coconut shell or metal, is skillfully maneuvered in a circular motion over the griddle, creating a mesmerizing mesh of thin, crepe-like folds. The resulting pancake is as delicate as lace yet robust enough to scoop up hearty curries. Speaking of curries, roti jala is typically served as a complement to indulgent, savory curries, often chicken or mutton. The pancake's delicate, porous structure perfectly absorbs the flavors of the curry, creating a harmonious symphony of tastes with every bite. From family gatherings to festive celebrations, roti jala is a staple in Malaysian cuisine, symbolizing togetherness and shared joy. The cultural significance of roti jala is deeply rooted in Malaysian society. In the bustling streets of Malaysia, 
you'll often see locals expertly pouring the batter onto the griddle, a testament to the years of practice and culinary prowess passed down through generations. The sight of these pancakes cooking on the griddle, their vibrant yellow hue standing out against the sizzling heat, is a captivating spectacle. As the roti jala cooks, the tantalizing aroma of the pancake intertwined with the spicy curry engulfs the air, marking the culinary vibrancy of Malaysia. So, the next time you find yourself in Malaysia or even in your own kitchen, don't miss the chance to experience this lacy delight. After all, to taste roti jala is to taste the heart of Malaysia. Ever strolled through the aromatic alleys of Peru? Here, in the heart of South America, exists a culinary marvel that has been a staple in Peruvian households for centuries. Meet the Papa Relina, a golden potato croquette that holds a world of flavor within its crisp shell. Papa Relena, meaning stuffed potato, is a dish that exemplifies the Peruvian love for potatoes, and rightfully so, for Peru is the birthplace of this versatile tuber. The preparation of this delectable croquette begins with boiled potatoes, mashed to a smooth consistency. This forms the outer shell, a canvas for the flavorful filling that's yet to come. The filling is a rich concoction of ground beef, sautéed onions, and a blend of spices that dance on your palate, jiving with the subtlety of hard-boiled eggs and the tangy surprise of olives. This mixture is carefully nestled within the potato shell, forming a pocket of layered flavors, ready to be discovered with each bite. But the magic doesn't stop there. The prepared croquette is then dipped in beaten egg and rolled in flour, readying it for its final transformation. As it's dropped into hot oil, it fries to a golden hue, its exterior developing a crispness that contrasts beautifully with its soft, flavorful interior. The Papa Relena is not just a dish, it's a cultural experience. It's the warmth of a Peruvian home, the laughter of families gathering around a dinner table, the tales of the Andean highlands narrated through food. It's the comfort of a familiar flavor, the excitement of a new discovery, the satisfaction of a well-cooked meal. As the Papa Relena fries to a golden hue, the rich aroma fills the air, a testament to the culinary diversity of Peru. This humble potato croquette with its layers of flavors and textures is a culinary gem that tells a story. A story of tradition, heritage, and the simple joy of good food. As we wrap up our culinary journey, let's take a moment to savor the flavors and stories we've uncovered, each a unique testament to the culture and traditions they hail from. We began in the labyrinthine streets of Tunisia where we discovered the brick, a delicate pastry filled with tuna, egg, capers, and parsley, all encased in a thin, crispy dough. The brick is not just a dish, it is the soul of Tunisian cuisine, a symbol of their love for the sea and their mastery over the art of pastry making. Next we journeyed to the vibrant markets of Georgia where we found the kachapuri, a boat-shaped bread filled with molten cheese and topped with a cracked egg. The kachapuri is more than just a cheesy delight, it's a warm welcome from the Georgian people, a symbol of their generous hospitality. In the bustling streets of Malaysia, we uncovered the roti jala, a lace-like pancake delicacy. The roti jala is not merely a dish, it's a testament to the intricate artistry of Malaysian cuisine, a testament to their knack for transforming simple ingredients into a masterpiece. We then strolled through the aromatic alleys of Peru, savoring the papa relena, a golden potato croquette filled with spiced ground beef, onions, hard-boiled eggs and olives. The Papa Relena isn't just a snack, it's a celebration of Peruvian ingenuity, a nod to their ability to create layers of flavor with humble ingredients. Our sensory journey took us to Iran next, where we indulged in pheasant a rich stew blending walnuts, pomegranate molasses and tender chicken or duck. The pheasant is not just a stew, it's a melody of flavors that embodies Persian cuisine a testament to their love for combining sweet and tangy flavors. Finally, we ventured into Nigeria, where we discovered Moi Moi, a steamed bean pudding. The Moi Moi isn't just a dish, it's a mosaic of flavors that reflect the vibrant culture and rich culinary heritage of Nigeria. Each of these culinary treasures whispers tales of tradition, culture and heritage, inviting you to embark on a culinary odyssey where every bite narrates a story of its own. Ever wondered how to bring the flavors of the world to your dinner table in just one hour? Welcome to a delightful challenge of creating a gastronomic journey that spans the globe, all within the comfort of your own kitchen. 
Our menu is a vibrant mix, starting with a refreshing Greek salad, moving on to a flavorful chicken stir-fry, accompanied by the tangy Mexican street corn, and wrapping up with the sweet delight of French crepes. Let's embark on a culinary journey around the world right from your kitchen. Our first stop is Greece with a refreshing Greek salad. Let's begin by preparing our ingredients. Start with fresh ripe tomatoes and cucumbers. Chop them into bite-sized pieces and place them in a large salad bowl. Next, slice a red onion into thin rings and chop a bell pepper into small pieces. Add these to your bowl. Now let's not forget the olives. These little gems are a staple in Greek salads, adding a burst of briny flavor that beautifully complements the freshness of the vegetables. Scatter a handful of olives throughout your salad. The final touch to our salad base is a generous sprinkle of feta cheese. This gives our salad its characteristic tangy punch, as well as a delightful creamy contrast to the crisp vegetables. With our salad base ready, it's time to prepare the dressing. In a separate bowl, combine extra virgin olive oil, a squeeze of fresh lemon juice, a sprinkle of dried oregano, and season with salt and pepper. Whisk them together until they amalgamate into a light, zesty dressing that will bring out the flavors of our salad. Pour the dressing over the salad and give everything a good toss, making sure all the ingredients are coated. The vibrant colors, the fresh aroma, and the variety of flavors and textures all come together in this simple yet satisfying dish. And just like that, you have a Greek salad ready to serve. Next, we're off to Mexico for some delicious street corn. Let's dive straight into the authentic, vibrant flavors of Mexican street food. The star of this segment is elote, or as it's better known, Mexican street corn. This dish is a delightful blend of smoky, tangy, and creamy flavors that is sure to be a hit at any gathering. First off, you'll need to grill or roast your corn on the cob until it's lightly charred. This process is what gives the corn its distinct smoky flavor. Whether you're using a grill or an oven, just remember it's all about getting those beautiful char marks on the corn. While the corn is roasting, it's time to prepare our mayo mixture. This creamy spread is a combination of mayonnaise, lime juice, and chili powder. The mayonnaise provides a rich, smooth base, the lime juice adds a tangy zing, and the chili powder brings a subtle kick of heat. Once your corn is perfectly charred and the mayo mixture is ready, it's time to bring the two together. Spread the mayo mixture evenly over the warm corn. Make sure every nook and cranny of the corn is covered to ensure a burst of flavor in every bite. But we're not done just yet. The final touch to our Mexican street corn is a generous sprinkling of cotilla cheese. This dry, crumbly cheese adds a delightful salty contrast to the creamy mayo and the sweet smoky corn. And last, but certainly not least, garnish your corn with some freshly chopped cilantro. This herb not only adds a pop of color but also contributes a fresh, citrusy contrast to the rich flavors in the dish. There you have it. Your Mexican street corn is a symphony of flavors, with each ingredient playing its part to create a dish that's smoky, creamy, tangy, and absolutely irresistible. Your Mexican street corn is ready to be savored, and trust us, it's as delicious as it looks. Enjoy this little taste of Mexico right from your kitchen. Now we're heading to Asia for a colorful and flavorful chicken stir-fry. First things first, let's get our chicken ready. We'll need a chicken breast sliced into small bite-sized pieces. You want these pieces to be uniform in size so that they cook evenly. And remember, the thinner they are, the quicker they'll cook. While our chicken is resting, let's move on to our vegetables. The beauty of a stir-fry is that you can use a variety of veggies. Today, we're using a mix of colorful bell peppers, sliced carrots, snow peas, and broccoli. Slice them into bite-sized pieces for easy eating. Now, we're ready to heat up our skillet. Stir-frying is a quick cooking method, so you want your skillet to be hot. Add a drizzle of oil and let it heat up, then add your chicken strips. They should sizzle as soon as they hit the pan. Keep them moving in the pan to ensure they cook evenly and don't stick. Once the chicken is cooked, remove it from the skillet and set it aside. In the same skillet, add a bit more oil if needed and toss in your veggies. They'll pick up all those delicious flavors left behind by the chicken. Stir-fry them until they're just tender. You still want them to have a bit of crunch. With our chicken and veggies cooked, it's time to bring everything together with our seasoning. We're using soy sauce, minced garlic, grated ginger, a splash of sesame oil, and a pinch of red pepper flakes. This combination will give our stir-fry a savory umami flavor with a hint of heat. Add your chicken back into the skillet with the veggies, then pour over your seasoning. Give everything a good stir to ensure it's well coated. Let it cook for another minute or two to let those flavors meld together. 
Finally, serve your stir-fry over steamed jasmine rice or noodles, whichever you prefer. The grains or noodles will soak up any excess sauce and complement the flavors of your stir-fry. It's important to remember that the key to a good stir-fry is preparation. Having all your ingredients ready to go before you start cooking makes the process smooth and efficient. Plus, since everything cooks so quickly, you don't want to be scrambling to chop veggies or measure out your seasoning while your chicken is in the pan. And there you have it, a vibrant chicken stir-fry to tingle your taste buds. Finally, we're off to France for a sweet ending with some delightful crepes. To start us off, we need to make a simple batter. For this we'll need flour, eggs, milk, and a pinch of salt. The beauty of crepes lies in their simplicity. Once you've gathered your ingredients, whisk them together until you have a smooth batter. The consistency should be similar to heavy cream, thin enough to spread easily across the pan, but not so thin that it runs off the edges. Now comes the part that requires a bit of patience. Allow the batter to rest for a few minutes. This is a crucial step, as it allows the flour to fully absorb the liquid, resulting in tender and light crepes. While our batter is resting, let's heat up a non-stick pan over medium heat. You'll know it's ready when a few droplets of water sizzle and evaporate quickly. Now pour a ladle full of batter into the pan. Immediately swirl the pan around, coating the bottom evenly with the batter. You want your crepe to be thin and delicate, not thick like a pancake. Keep a close eye on your crepe. Once the edges start to turn a lovely golden brown, it's time to flip. If you're feeling adventurous, give it a whirl in the air, otherwise a spatula will do just fine. The second side will need less time to cook, just a few seconds will do. Now for the fun part, the fillings. This is where you can let your creativity run wild. From a classic spread of Nutella to a sprinkle of sugar and a squeeze of fresh lemon juice, the options are endless. Fresh berries make for a delightful summer filling, while a dollop of creamy mascarpone and a drizzle of honey can turn your crepe into a decadent treat. And if you prefer something less sweet, how about a savory version with ham and cheese or spinach and ricotta? Remember, the joy of cooking lies in making a dish your own. So don't be afraid to experiment with your fillings. The world is your oyster or in this case your crepe. Once you've filled your crepe, fold it into a neat parcel or simply roll it up like a cigar. And there you have it. A delightful French dessert that's as versatile as it is delicious. Voila, a perfect French dessert to end your meal. And that, folks, is how you travel the world in just one hour, through your dinner. We've journeyed through the vibrant, refreshing flavors of a Greek salad, savored the smoky, spicy notes of Mexican street corn, reveled in the savory, umami-rich delights of a chicken stir-fry, and ended our culinary expedition with the sweet, delicate tastes of French crepes. Each dish, a testament to the rich diversity of global cuisine, comes together to create a meal that's not only delicious but also a celebration of cultural harmony. We started with the salad, moved on to grilling the corn, stir-fried the chicken, and finally, whisked up the crepes. Embarking on this culinary journey doesn't just satiate your taste buds but also feeds your soul with an appreciation for the vast flavors the world has to offer. So, don your apron, wield your spatula, and create your own global feast. Until next time, keep exploring the world through your kitchen. Are you ready to explore some luxurious and tantalizing recipes? Today we dive into the world of culinary opulence where food is not just sustenance but an extravagant experience. We'll journey through dishes like seared scallops with lemon butter sauce, truffle mushroom risotto and the decadence of chocolate lava cakes. We'll also delve into the richness of pan-seared foie gras, the freshness of salmon with dill cream sauce, and end on a sweet note with berry mascarpone parfait. Prepare your taste buds for a luxurious culinary journey. First on the menu we have the elegant seared scallops with lemon butter sauce. This dish, a true classic, marries the richness of the sea with the tangy zest of lemon in a delightful symphony of flavors. To begin we take our fresh scallops and pat them dry. This is a crucial step as it ensures that our scallops will achieve that perfect sear. Season them lightly with salt and pepper to enhance their natural flavor. Next, we heat a skillet over medium-high heat and add a generous dollop of butter. The scallops are then seared for two to three minutes on each side until they reach a beautiful golden brown hue. This step is all about timing. Too short and they're undercooked, too long and they become rubbery. While our scallops are resting, we shift our focus to the lemon butter sauce. This quick and easy sauce starts with melted butter, to which we add minced garlic for a kick of flavor. A squeeze of fresh lemon juice provides the perfect tang, and a pinch of red pepper flakes gives it a subtle heat. 
The final step is to drizzle this heavenly sauce over our beautifully seared scallops. The buttery richness of the sauce complements the delicate sweetness of the scallops, creating a dish that is both simple and luxurious. And voila, a delectable dish that's sure to impress. This seared scallops with lemon butter sauce is a testament to the magic that can happen when fresh ingredients meet simple techniques. Next, we have the creamy and rich truffle mushroom risotto. Now this dish is a symphony of flavors, combining the earthy delight of mushrooms with the luxurious touch of truffle oil. Let's dive right into the process. It all begins with sauteing diced mushrooms in butter until they're golden and aromatic. The key here is patience. You want to let those mushrooms gently cook, releasing their flavors and soaking up the butter. Then comes the arborio rice. This type of rice is perfect for risotto as it absorbs liquids and flavors, yet still remains firm. You'll want to toast it lightly in the pan with the mushrooms, just for a minute. The next stage requires a little bit of time but it's worth every second. You'll slowly add hot chicken or vegetable broth, one ladle at a time, stirring constantly until each ladleful is absorbed. This gradual addition of liquid is what gives risotto its characteristic creaminess. Once your rice is cooked and creamy, it's time for the grand finale. You'll finish your risotto with a generous sprinkle of grated Parmesan cheese, a drizzle of truffle oil, and a scattering of freshly chopped parsley. The cheese adds a delightful richness, the truffle oil provides an indulgent earthiness, and the parsley brings a pop of freshness to balance it all out. There you have it, a luxurious risotto that's absolutely divine. This truffle mushroom risotto is truly a dish that promises a memorable culinary experience and epitome of luxury on a plate. Moving on to our main course, the succulent herb-crusted rack of lamb. This dish is a celebration of flavors, worthy of any special occasion. To start, we'll need a beautiful rack of lamb. The key to a perfect lamb dish lies in the seasoning. We'll rub the rack of lamb with a mixture of minced garlic and freshly chopped herbs. Rosemary, thyme, and parsley are the stars here, their aromatic essence pairing wonderfully with the natural flavor of the lamb. A dash of salt and pepper will enhance these flavors further, creating a beautiful symphony on the palate. Now comes the searing process. Place the seasoned rack of lamb in a hot pan with a drizzle of olive oil. The pan's heat will sear the lamb, browning it on all sides. This process locks in the flavors and gives the outside of the lamb a delightful crispiness. Once the lamb is beautifully seared, it's time to transfer it to a preheated oven. The roasting process will cook the lamb to perfection. Set the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. 12 to 15 minutes should do the trick for a medium rare finish. This is a dish that truly embodies luxury with its rich flavors and tender juicy meat. The herb crust gives it an extra layer of flavor and texture, making it a true culinary delight. And there you have a deliciously juicy and flavorful lamb dish. Now, let's delve into the sweet world with our decadent chocolate lava cakes. This dessert is a symphony of textures with a warm, gooey center that's sure to delight. To start, we'll need to melt butter and dark chocolate together. This combination forms the rich, indulgent base of our cake. Once melted, set it aside to cool slightly. While the chocolate mixture cools, whisk together eggs, sugar, and a dash of vanilla extract in a separate bowl. This vanilla-infused sweet base will balance the bitter notes of the dark chocolate, creating a tantalizing interplay of flavors. Once whisked to a smooth consistency, it's time to unite our two mixtures. Slowly combine the melted chocolate mixture with the egg and sugar base, stirring gently to ensure a homogeneous blend. Once combined, fold in flour to create a thick, luxurious batter that's ready for baking. Pour your batter into greased ramekins, filling each almost to the top. These will be placed in a preheated oven set at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. The magic number here is 10 to 12 minutes, just enough time for the edges to set, while the center remains irresistibly gooey. The result? An exquisite chocolate lava cake with a molten center that spills out at the slightest touch, creating a dessert as visually stunning as it is delicious. And there you have it a sweet treat that's sure to satisfy your sweet tooth. Next up is a true delicacy, pan-seared foie gras with balsamic reduction. This luxurious dish is a testament to the beauty of simplicity and the power of quality ingredients. Let's dive into the creation of this gastronomic delight. Begin by selecting the finest slices of foie gras. Foie gras, the fattened liver of a duck or goose, is renowned for its rich, buttery, and delicate flavor. Season these slices generously with salt and pepper, respecting the inherent flavor of this gourmet ingredient. Next, heat a skillet over medium-high heat. 
Precision is key here, as the pan must be hot enough to sear the foie gras, yet not so hot that it burns. Place the foie gras on the heated skillet and let the magic happen. Sear it for about a minute on each side until it's beautifully caramelized. The result should be a delectable contrast between the crisp exterior and the tender, melt-in-your-mouth interior. Once the foie gras is perfectly seared, it's time to enhance its flavor with a balsamic reduction. Remove the foie gras and set it aside. Deglaze the pan with balsamic vinegar, allowing it to simmer until it reduces to a thick, syrupy glaze. This reduction with its sweet and tangy notes is the perfect accompaniment to the rich foie gras. And there you have a truly decadent dish for those special occasions. The pan-seared foie gras with balsamic reduction, a dish that emanates elegance, sophistication, and a tantalizing array of flavors. This is indeed a culinary masterpiece fit for a feast of opulence. Our next dish is the flavorful salmon with dill cream sauce. Bringing gourmet dining to your home kitchen, this delectable salmon recipe is a testament to the elegance of simplicity. The hero of this dish is the salmon filet, pan-seared to perfection. The process is straightforward, yet the result is a beautifully cooked salmon with a golden exterior, while the inside remains tender and moist. But what gives this dish its distinctive character is the dill cream sauce. This sauce begins its journey with cream as the base to which we add minced garlic for a punch of flavor. Next, we introduce the star ingredient, the chopped dill. This herb imparts a unique aromatic quality that pairs exceptionally well with the salmon. The sauce takes a tangy turn with the addition of fresh lemon juice, which balances the richness of the cream. And to elevate the sauce even further, we add a splash of white wine. The alcohol in the wine cooks off, leaving behind a fragrance that adds depth to the sauce. The sauce is left to simmer until it thickens to a creamy consistency. The final step is to pour this delightful dill cream sauce over the pan-seared salmon. The sauce not only adds an extra layer of flavor, but also gives the dish a visually appealing finish. And just like that, you have a luxurious salmon dish that's bursting with flavors. And lastly, we have a refreshing berry mascarpone parfait to end our culinary journey. This dessert is as delectable as it is beautiful, with its vibrant layers of flavor. The process begins by combining fresh mixed berries with a rich mixture of mascarpone cheese, powdered sugar, and a hint of vanilla extract. This creamy concoction is the heart of our parfait. The assembly is an art in itself. Start by placing a generous layer of the mixed berries at the bottom of a glass or bowl. Follow this with a smooth layer of the mascarpone mixture. Continue alternating these layers, each one a delicious testament to the balance of tart berries and sweet creamy mascarpone. The final touch is a dollop of whipped cream, crowning the parfait with its light, airy texture. And of course, a sprig of mint for that pop of color and freshness. There you have it, a delightful dessert that's the perfect end to a luxurious meal. And that wraps up our tour of luxurious and tantalizing recipes. We've seared succulent scallops, savored a truffle mushroom risotto, relished a herb-crusted rack of lamb, indulged in decadent chocolate lava cakes, reveled in pan-seared foie gras, delighted in salmon with a dill cream sauce, and ended on a sweet note with a berry mascarpone parfait. Each dish is a symphony of flavors, offering a memorable culinary experience. Enjoy the extravagance these dishes bring to your table and always remember, adjust seasoning and ingredients to suit your taste preferences. Until next time. Have you ever wondered about the variety of cuisines around the world? Each corner of our planet offers a distinct culinary narrative, a unique symphony of flavors, textures and aromas that reflect the geography, history and culture of its people. This, my friends, is the diversity of world cuisines, a testament to human creativity and the rich tapestry of our shared heritage. Imagine a table that stretches from horizon to horizon, laden with dishes from every culture, every nation. From the fragrant spices of India to the refined tastes of France. From the simple elegance of Japanese food to the eclectic fusion of American cuisine. This isn't just a feast for the stomach, but a feast for the senses, an edible atlas of human civilization. But it's not just about the food itself, it's about the cooking techniques, the methods passed down through generations, the artistry that turns raw ingredients into a meal. The searing heat of the tandoor, the precision of the sushi knife, the slow simmer of the coco van, the sizzle of the American grill, each has its own rhythm, its own heartbeat, adding another layer to the symphony of global cuisine.
Yet in this diversity, there's a common thread that binds us all. It's the shared joy of a good meal, the comfort of family and friends gathered around a table, the satisfaction of a hunger well sated. It's the universal language of food spoken in a thousand dialects, yet understood by all. So let's explore this world of flavors together. Let's experience the heat of Indian curries, the delicate balance of French sauces, the minimalist beauty of Japanese sushi, and the bold combinations of American dishes. Let's travel without leaving our kitchens. Let's learn from each other, and let's celebrate the diversity that makes us unique, yet brings us together. Stay tuned as we embark on a culinary journey around the globe. Imagine the vibrant spices and tantalizing aromas of Indian cuisine. As we delve into the heart of India, we are met with a symphony of flavors that dance upon the palate. A key player in this flavorful orchestra is the traditional cooking techniques unique to this region. Of these, the use of a tandoor oven is integral to the Indian culinary narrative. Originating from the Indian subcontinent, the tandoor is a cylindrical clay oven used extensively in the cooking of many Indian dishes. This oven's high cooking temperature, reaching over 900 degrees Fahrenheit, imparts a distinctive smoky flavor to dishes like the famous tandoori chicken and the soft, fluffy naan bread. The tandoor is not just an oven. It's a testament to how a cooking method can shape a cuisine, lending it a characteristic appeal. Yet Indian cuisine is not just about the tandoor. Another significant aspect is the process of tempering spices, locally known as tadka. This technique involves heating oil or ghee, then adding a combination of spices to it. The heated oil or ghee has the magical ability to extract and retain the essence, aroma, and flavor of these spices, transforming ordinary ingredients into a medley of extraordinary flavors. This is the secret behind the robust flavors in Indian dishes like dal, curries, and chutneys. From the sizzling sounds of the tadka process to the smoky aroma of tandoor-cooked dishes, the Indian kitchen is a vibrant and sensory experience. It is an intricate dance of flavors and aromas that create a cuisine rich in tradition and diversity. The use of these techniques doesn't just add to the taste of the food. They tell a story of the land, the culture, and the people that have shaped this cuisine over centuries. A culinary exploration of India would be incomplete without experiencing these defining techniques. The aromas and flavors of Indian cuisine are a testament to the country's cultural diversity and rich history. Each dish, each technique, tells a tale of traditions passed down through generations, making Indian cuisine a flavorful journey through time and culture. Now let's fly to France, the culinary capital of the world. A journey into French cuisine is a voyage into a world of precision, passion and unparalleled flavor profiles. This is a world where meticulous cooking techniques are revered as much as the ingredients themselves. Here, a sauce is not just a mere accompaniment, but an art form, a symphony of flavors that can elevate even the simplest of dishes to a gastronomic masterpiece. In the heart of French cuisine, the art of making sauces is held in high esteem. This is an intricate dance that requires patience, finesse, and an intimate understanding of ingredients. Whether it's the velvety bechamel, the wine-infused bordelais, or the rich and creamy hollandaise, each sauce is a testament to the culinary prowess of the French. The depth and complexity of these sauces are the results of slow cooking and the gradual layering of flavors, a technique that has been perfected over centuries. But what makes French cuisine truly stand out is its emphasis on quality ingredients. From the freshest seafood from the Brittany coast, the finest poultry from Bressy, to the most aromatic herbs from Provence, French cooking celebrates the bounty of its regional produce. Each ingredient is treated with the utmost respect and prepared in a way that accentuates its natural flavors. Take, for instance, the classic coq au vin. This dish, which translates to rooster in wine, is a beautiful example of French culinary artistry. Here, a simple chicken is transformed into a succulent, melt-in-your-mouth delicacy, thanks to a slow bath in a rich wine-based sauce. It's a dish that embodies the soul of French cuisine, slow, deliberate, and full of depth. The French have a saying, la sauce fait passer le poisson, which means the sauce makes the fish go down. It's a testament to the belief that a well-made sauce 
can turn even the most humble of ingredients into a feast for the senses. French cuisine, with its focus on quality ingredients and meticulous cooking techniques, truly embodies the adage, the secret is in the sauce. Next, we journey to the land of the rising sun, Japan. Here, food is not just sustenance, but an art form, a tradition, and a way to communicate without words. Japanese cuisine, with its understated elegance and profound depth, is a testament to the nation's respect for nature and balance. The heart of this cuisine lies in its simplicity, the ability to bring out the natural essence of ingredients. Consider sushi, a dish that truly embodies this philosophy. In the hands of a skilled sushi chef, a few simple ingredients, raw fish, rice and seaweed, are transformed into a symphony of flavors and textures. The rice, seasoned with just the right amount of vinegar, sugar and salt, balances the rich, succulent slices of fish. The seaweed, crisp and briny, adds an additional layer of complexity. This is the art of sushi making, a dance of balance and precision. Yet, the simplicity of Japanese cuisine is not just about minimal ingredients. It's also about the techniques employed to enhance and preserve the natural flavors. Take, for example, the art of grilling fish over an open flame, a technique known as robatayaki. The fish is lightly seasoned, often only with salt, and then slowly grilled. The result is a dish that showcases the fish's natural sweetness and delicate texture, unmasked by heavy sauces or seasonings. And then there's umami, the fifth taste, a savory flavor that is deeply integral to Japanese cuisine. From the dashi broth that forms the base of many soups and stews, to the fermented soybeans known as natto, umami is everywhere. It's a taste that lingers, that makes food more satisfying and complete. It's the glue that holds the dish together, the taste that makes you want to take another bite, and then another. In the end, Japanese cuisine is not just about the food. It's about the respect for the ingredients, the meticulous preparation, and the pursuit of balance and harmony. It's about finding beauty in simplicity and depth in subtlety. Japanese cuisine, a testament to the beauty of simplicity and balance. Finally, we arrive in the melting pot of cultures, the United States. Here, cuisine is not just food, but an intricate tapestry woven with threads of diverse cultures, traditions, and flavors. Every bite is a testament to the country's rich history of immigration. Each dish a delicious narrative of fusion and adaptation. American cuisine is not confined to a single style or technique. It's a symphony of countless cooking methods borrowed, adapted, and perfected from across the globe. Take smoking, for instance. This technique, with roots in indigenous practices, has been adopted and refined over centuries. The result? Succulent smoked meats that melt in your mouth, a staple at any American barbecue. Then there's grilling, a technique that resonates with the American love for outdoor cooking. From sizzling steaks to juicy burgers, grilling is synonymous with American summers, bringing together communities in celebration of good food and camaraderie. Yet American cuisine is not just about smoking and grilling, it's about the fusion of flavors from the fiery spices of Mexico to the hearty stews of Europe. It's about the melding of techniques, from the wok frying methods of China to the pasta making traditions of Italy. It's about the transformation of ingredients from the humble potato turned into crispy fries to corn transformed into fluffy popcorn. American cuisine is a culinary journey in itself, an exploration of the world's flavors. It's the spicy kick of a Creole jambalaya, the comforting warmth of a New England clam chowder, the tangy zest of a Californian fish taco, and the sweet indulgence of a Southern pecan pie. Each dish tells a story, a story of cultures colliding, merging, and creating something uniquely American. So as we conclude our global culinary tour, remember this. Cuisine is more than just food. It's a celebration of diversity, a testament to human creativity, and a delicious way to explore the world without leaving your kitchen. American cuisine, a delicious blend of world flavors. Ever wondered how to make the perfect filet mignon steak with red wine sauce, garlic mashed potatoes, and sauteed asparagus at home? Welcome to a culinary journey that will transform your kitchen into a gourmet steakhouse. 
We'll be working with some mouth-watering ingredients today, including tender filet mignon steaks, a robust red wine sauce, creamy garlic mashed potatoes, and vibrant sautéed asparagus. Each component is a star in its own right, coming together to create a symphony of flavors. So get ready to impress your guests with this incredible meal. First and foremost, we start with the star of the show, the filet mignon. The key to a perfect filet mignon lies in its preparation. Start by patting the steaks dry with paper towels. This removes any excess moisture which could hinder the browning process, essential for achieving that delectable crust we all crave. Now let's season the steaks. This is where the magic begins. Sprinkle generously with salt and freshly ground black pepper on both sides. The salt will not only enhance the flavor but also assist in forming that mouth-watering crust. Next, we heat a cast iron skillet. It's preferable to use a cast iron skillet as it retains heat well and ensures an even sear. Once heated, add a drizzle of olive oil. When the oil shimmers, it's time to place the steaks in the skillet. Hear that sizzle? That's the sound of flavor developing. Now this is crucial. Sear the steaks for about 3-4 to four minutes on each side for medium rare. If you prefer your steak a bit more done, adjust the time accordingly. The goal here is to create a beautiful brown crust on each side while keeping the inside juicy and tender. In the last minute of cooking, add a pat of butter to the skillet. This is where we introduce a whole new level of richness. As the butter melts, tilt the pan slightly and continuously spoon the melted butter over the steaks. This process, known as basting, imparts an incredible depth of flavor and helps the steak achieve a beautiful, even browning. Once the steaks are perfectly cooked, remove them from the skillet and let them rest. This allows the juices to redistribute throughout the steak, ensuring every bite is moist and flavorful. Now that our steaks are resting, it's time to make the red wine sauce. But that, my friends, is a story for the next scene. Stay tuned. A good steak deserves a great sauce and this red wine sauce is just that. Let's dive straight into the process. We're going to start by using the same skillet in which we seared our filet mignon. It's still warm and full of those delicious steak flavors. We'll add in our finely chopped shallots and minced garlic, sauteing them for about a minute until they become fragrant. Now comes the exciting part. We're going to pour in our red wine. As we do this, let's talk a bit about the wine. You're going to want to choose a good quality red wine, something that you'd enjoy drinking. When you cook with wine, the alcohol evaporates leaving behind the rich, deep flavors of the grape. So, the better the wine, the better the sauce. Once our wine is in, we'll add in our beef broth. This will give our sauce a robust and meaty depth of flavor. As the broth and wine blend together, we'll scrape up any browned bits from the bottom of the pan. These bits are packed with flavor and will infuse our sauce with a savory complexity. Next, we introduce some fresh thyme sprigs into the mix. Thyme has a subtle, earthy flavor that complements the richness of our sauce. We'll let this simmer until the sauce reduces by half, intensifying the flavors and creating a thicker texture. As our final step, we'll stir in a couple of tablespoons of butter until it's completely melted. This isn't just for richness. The butter also gives our sauce a glossy, luxurious finish that looks incredible drizzled over our filet mignon. And there you have it. Our red wine sauce is ready, a symphony of flavors, each playing its part to enhance the overall taste. It's rich, it's savory, it's subtly sweet, and it's about to make our filet mignon even more delicious. With our sauce ready, let's move on to the garlic mashed potatoes. Now, what's a steak without some creamy, garlicky mashed potatoes on the side? Mashed potatoes are a classic side, but we're giving them a bit of a twist today. We're going to infuse them with the rich, earthy flavor of garlic, which will pair beautifully with our filet mignon and red wine sauce. First, we'll need four large russet potatoes. These are perfect because they're starchy and fluffy, which is exactly what we're looking for in a mashed potato. Peel and dice these potatoes and get them boiling in a pot of salted water. This process will soften them up and make them ready for mashing. While our potatoes are boiling, let's turn our attention to the star of this side dish, the garlic. We'll need four cloves, minced. Now you might think four cloves sound like a lot, but trust me, once it's cooked and mixed in with our potatoes, it's going to give them a subtle yet irresistible garlicky flavor. In a small saucepan, we're going to melt half a cup of butter. Once it's melted, add in the minced garlic and let it cook for a bit. This process infuses the butter with the flavor of the garlic, creating a delicious garlic butter that's going to make our mashed potatoes absolutely mouth-watering. By now, our potatoes should be tender. Drain them and return them to the pot. Now comes the fun part, mashing. You'll want to mash until there are no lumps, 
and then stir in our garlic butter. The potatoes will soak up all that garlicky goodness and start to take on a creamy texture. To make our potatoes even creamier, we're going to add half a cup of heavy cream or milk. Stir this in along with some salt and pepper to taste. The result? A batch of the most delicious, creamy, garlicky mashed potatoes you've ever tasted. With our potatoes beautifully mashed, we're on to our final component, the sautéed asparagus. And to add a bit of crunch and freshness, we have some beautifully sautéed asparagus. This vibrant green veggie is not just a feast for the eyes, but also a delight for the palate, adding a crisp contrast to our succulent filet mignon and creamy mashed potatoes. Now let's get to the sautéing part, which is as simple as it is quick. Start by heating a drizzle of olive oil in a skillet over medium heat. Once the oil is shimmering, it's time to introduce our asparagus spears. Season them with a sprinkle of salt and pepper to enhance their natural flavor. Keep in mind, we're aiming for asparagus that is crisp tender. That means we want it lightly browned, but still retaining a bit of crunch. This usually takes about four to five minutes. Remember, overcooking them will result in limp and lifeless spears and nobody wants that. With all our components ready, it's time to assemble this luxurious meal. Now comes the fun part, bringing it all together on a plate. So let's start this culinary assembly line. First in line, our star, the filet mignon. It's been resting, absorbing all those delicious juices back in. Place the filet mignon steaks at the center of your plate. This is your canvas, and the steak is your masterpiece. Next, drizzle that sumptuous red wine sauce over the steaks. Don't be shy with it. Let the sauce pool around the filet, creating a luxurious moat of flavor. The rich, deep color of the sauce not only adds an extra layer of taste but also gives a visual contrast against the steak. Now, on to our comforting sidekick, the garlic mashed potatoes. Take a generous scoop of these creamy wonders and place it next to the steak. The potatoes with their smooth texture and delicate garlic notes offer a delightful balance to the robust flavors of the steak and red wine sauce. Next up, our vibrant sautéed asparagus. Arrange these green spears artistically around the plate. Their bright color adds a splash of freshness to the dish, and their crisp, tender texture introduces an exciting contrast to the softness of the potatoes and the steak. A little garnish can go a long way to elevate the look of your dish. If you have some, scatter a bit of chopped fresh parsley over the mashed potatoes. The green specks add a pop of color and a subtle herby flavor that complements the potatoes beautifully. Take a step back, admire your creation. Each component on the plate with its unique flavor and texture plays a vital role in this symphony of tastes. Yet, they all come together harmoniously, creating a meal that's not just delicious but also visually appealing. And there you have it. A restaurant-quality filet mignon steak with red wine sauce, garlic mashed potatoes, and sautéed asparagus right at your home. A luxurious meal that's sure to impress, whether it's for a special occasion or just because you deserve it. Bon appétit! Imagine indulging in layers of coffee-soaked ladyfinger biscuits complemented by the creaminess of mascarpone cheese, all dusted with a generous layer of cocoa powder. Yes, we're talking about tiramisu, a classic dessert that hails from the beautiful country of Italy. This delightful treat is more than just a dessert, it's an experience, a dance of flavors and textures that's simply irresistible. At the heart of tiramisu are two main components, ladyfinger biscuits soaked in coffee and a rich creamy mascarpone cheese. These ingredients come together to create a dessert that's indulgent, creamy, and brimming with a rich coffee flavor. It's a dessert that truly captures the spirit of Italian cuisine, renowned for its simplicity, quality ingredients, and depth of flavor. Tiramisu is not just a dessert, it's a celebration of coffee, cheese, and cocoa, all in one bite. So, if you're a coffee lover, tiramisu is your ticket to dessert heaven. Now let's travel to the Middle East and savor the sweet, flaky delight that is baklava. This dessert is a culinary masterpiece, a testament to the art of pastry making. Imagine thin sheets of phyllo dough, each one carefully buttered and stacked. The layers are then filled with finely chopped nuts, usually pistachios, walnuts, or almonds, though the choice of nuts can vary based on regional recipes and personal preferences. But what elevates baklava to its heavenly status is the sweetening process. Once the pastry is baked to a golden perfection, it's drenched in a syrup or honey mixture. 
This infusion of sweetness seeps into every layer, every nook and cranny of the pastry, creating a harmonious blend of flavors and textures. The end result? A dessert that's flaky on the outside, tender on the inside, and packed full of nutty sweetness. With every bite, baklava delivers a satisfying crunch, making every bite a sweet adventure. Let's venture to Thailand to discover a dessert that perfectly blends sweet, creamy, and tropical flavors. Mango Sticky Rice. This dessert is a delightful dance of textures and tastes that takes you on a journey to the heart of Southeast Asia. Picture this. Fresh, ripe mango slices, the epitome of tropical fruit, paired with sweet, sticky rice that's been lovingly cooked in coconut milk. The mango, with its vibrant color and sweetness, perfectly complements the subtly flavored chewy rice, but that's not all. To elevate this dessert to the next level, there's a drizzle of coconut sauce. This luscious addition creates a symphony of flavors that's absolutely irresistible. The creamy coconut sauce adds an extra layer of richness, making each bite a dreamy escape. Mango Sticky Rice is a harmonious medley of flavors that will transport you straight to a tropical paradise. Next, we're off to Spain for a dessert that's crispy on the outside and soft and fluffy on the inside, churros with chocolate sauce. This dessert is a popular choice in both Spain and Mexico, showcasing the best of both worlds. These scrumptious treats begin their life as dough, which is then piped through a star-shaped nozzle and plunged into hot oil. The result? Perfectly golden sticks of fried dough. But the magic doesn't stop there. Each churro is then coated in a blissful blend of sugar and cinnamon, giving it an irresistible aroma and an extra layer of flavor. And what's a churro without its accompaniment? The churros are served with a rich warm chocolate sauce that's so divine, it'll make you want to lick the bowl clean. The combination of the crispy cinnamon coated churro and the velvety chocolate sauce is nothing short of perfection. Churros deliver a mouth-watering contrast of textures that's sure to delight your taste buds. Next, let's take a virtual trip to India to discover the decadent dessert known as Gulab Jamun. This sweet treat is a staple at Indian celebrations and is loved by millions across the globe. Imagine a dessert made from milk-solid dumplings that are deep-fried to golden perfection. These dumplings are then soaked in a syrup that's as fragrant as it is sweet. It's flavored with cardamom, a spice known for its unique and aromatic flavor. The syrup also includes rose water, which adds a floral note to the mix, and saffron, a luxurious spice that imparts a beautiful color and a subtle earthy taste. The result is a dessert that's soft and syrupy, rich and indulgent. Each bite of gulab jamun brings a burst of sweetness, followed by the complex flavors of the spices. It's a dessert that's incredibly rich and decadent, a perfect end to any meal. Gulab jamun is a soft, syrupy, and incredibly decadent dessert that will leave you wanting more. We've taken a sweet journey around the world, discovering heavenly desserts from Italy to India, each offering a unique taste of the culture it originates from. Our taste buds have been on a global tour, indulging in flavors from creamy to crunchy and everything in between. We started off in Italy, savoring the indulgent layers of coffee-soaked biscuits and mascarpone cheese in tiramisu, dusted with a rich cocoa powder. Then we journeyed to the Middle East, where we experienced the delightful crunch of baklava, a flaky pastry filled with chopped nuts and sweetened with syrup. Our adventure took us next to Thailand, where we tasted the harmonious blend of sweet, creamy, and tropical flavors in mango sticky rice. And who could forget the Spanish and Mexican treat, churros with chocolate sauce. These fried dough pastries coated in cinnamon sugar served with a rich warm chocolate dipping sauce were a crunchy delight. We then headed to India, where we indulged in the syrupy decadence of gulab jamun, deep fried milk solid dumplings soaked in a fragrant sugar syrup. Our taste buds were further tantalized in Portugal with pastel de nata, a creamy custard filled puff pastry often served warm with a sprinkle of cinnamon. Our sweet journey also took us back to the Middle East with naf, a dessert made with shredded phyllo dough, layered with cheese or semolina, and drenched in sugar syrup. From there, we hopped over to Japan to sample mochi ice cream, a delightful blend of chewy and creamy textures. We then landed in New Zealand and Australia to taste the light and airy pavlova. 
a crispy meringue base topped with whipped cream and fresh fruits. And lastly, back to India, where we savored the creamy, rich, and aromatic kulfi, a traditional Indian ice cream. Each of these desserts, unique in their own right, offer a delightful finale to any meal showcasing flavors and textures that reflect the essence of their origins. So whether you're a chocolate lover or a fruit fanatic, there's a global dessert out there waiting for you to discover. Until next time, keep your sweet tooth ready for more delicious adventures. Ever wondered how to make authentic ethnic dishes at home? Well, the answer is right here in the next 10 minutes. This is a journey through five different cuisines and their most famous dishes. Let's embark on a culinary adventure to Italy, our first stop. Here we find the classic pasta carbonara. Start by cooking spaghetti as per the instructions on the packet. While that's happening, grab a skillet and saute diced pancetta until it crisps up. Add some minced garlic for an extra kick. In a bowl, whisk together eggs, grated pecorino romano cheese, and black pepper. Drain the pasta, toss it with the pancetta, and swiftly stir in the egg mixture. The heat will cook the eggs slightly, creating a creamy sauce. Serve it up straight away for the best experience. Next, we're heading to Japan for a lesson in making sushi rolls. Cook sushi rice as per the package instructions and allow it to cool. Lay a sheet of nori on a bamboo rolling mat, spread the rice evenly on the nori, and add your preferred fillings. Traditional choices include cucumber, avocado, and cooked shrimp or fish. Roll it tightly using the mat, then slice the roll into bite-sized pieces. Serve with soy sauce, pickled ginger, and wasabi for a true Japanese experience. Our journey takes us to Mexico next, where we delve into making chicken fajitas. Slice a chicken breast into strips and saute these in a skillet with bell peppers and onions. Season it all with fajita seasoning or a mix of chili powder, cumin, and paprika. Fill warm tortillas with the cooked chicken and veggies and top it off with guacamole, salsa, sour cream, and shredded cheese. From Mexico, we travel to India for a taste of chicken tikka masala. Marinate the chicken in yogurt and spices including garam masala, turmeric, cumin, coriander, and ginger garlic paste. Grill or pan sear the chicken until it's cooked through. Then simmer the cooked chicken in a rich tomato-based sauce flavored with cream, more spices, and sometimes fenugreek leaves. Serve this savory dish over rice or with naan bread. Our final stop is China, where we learn to make beef and broccoli stir-fry. Thinly slice beef and marinate it in soy sauce, garlic, ginger, and a touch of cornstarch. Quickly stir-fry the beef in a hot skillet, then remove it. Stir-fry broccoli florets and sliced garlic in the same skillet, add the beef back in, and toss everything with a sauce made of soy sauce, oyster sauce, and a bit of sugar. Remember, these are simplified instructions. Traditional recipes may have more intricate steps and specific regional variations. Refer to detailed recipes for precise measurements and cooking techniques to achieve authentic flavors. In this journey, we've explored pasta carbonara from Italy, sushi rolls from Japan, chicken fajitas from Mexico, chicken tikka masala from India, and beef and broccoli stir-fry from China. Each dish is a classic representation of its country's culinary tradition. Enjoy exploring these diverse and flavorful dishes from around the world, and don't hesitate to bring a taste of the world to your own kitchen. Happy cooking!